The Festival of Coins is brought to you in partnership with the Numismatic Guarantee Corporation and the Royal Mint Museum. Okay, so welcome to this Festival of Coins uh, session. Today we're joined by Roger Bland. Uh, Roger is the president of the Royal Numismatic Society. Um, he's got a vast numismatic knowledge, having worked for the British Museum, initially in the Coins and Medals Department, and later as the keeper of the Department of Britain, Europe and Prehistory. Um, he is the editor of the Ro Roman Imperial Coinage Series. He's been an editor uh, for the series of coin hoards from Roman Britain. Um, and indeed, Roger has written uh, hundreds of articles and publications on numismatics over the years and has received many accolades and awards, including an OBE uh, in 2008 for services to heritage. So, Roger, thanks so much for joining us today. It's, it's a pleasure, Matthew. Thank you. I wondered if we could start by, um, and it, we, we might need quite a while to go through this, so uh, I guess the summary of your career in coins, how did it all kind of begin for? Uh, it began uh, really quite a long time ago, um, probably about 60 years ago, um, uh, because um, I had a grandfather who was a, a great collector of Anglo-Saxon and Norman coins. Yeah. Um, called Francis Elmore Jones. And um, uh, he um, really got me interested in them when I was quite young. Um, he was, um, he said he didn't want to um, encourage another collector who might be a rival to him in Anglo-Saxon coins. So he encouraged me to be interested in Roman coins, which were a lot more affordable for, for a small boy um, yeah. than, than Anglo-Saxon coins were then. And um, I was very lucky. Um, he introduced me to the firm of um, Baldwins, who was still with us in yeah. uh, central London. And I used to be allowed um, to go um, down on Saturday mornings from our house in West London on a bus on my own. This was really exciting um, uh, to, um, uh, to to Baldwin's shop on, on Saturday mornings. And um, uh, I, I usually was able to um, find some fairly common, um, they're usually late Roman um, coins um, that, that, that I was able to add uh, to my collection because there was a delightful gentleman, sadly died, quite, really quite young, called Albert Baldwin, who um, uh, w was um, head of the firm at that time, used to look after me. But um, later, my grandfather, um, he had a rather sad, um, sadly, his coin collection was stolen from his home. Oh, no. And um, a few years later, most of it, the great, greater part of it was actually recovered by the police uh which which was great but he decided he didn't want to keep it in his home anymore he didn't no. have any confidence that that was going to be a safe place for it <laughs> so it um uh so uh he was allowed to keep it in the coin department at the british museum and right. he used to go and uh work on it there and also um do other jobs for um the then curator the late Marion Archibald, um, and uh, she got him to help her, uh, for example, on um, cataloguing, um, studying uh, new hoards of coins, for example, that came up. And I was allowed to go along and help as well, um, which was which was a you know terrific privilege for somebody yeah. somebody of my age. So that's how really how it all started. Wow. Okay. So. Um... So since then, you've you've always collected. So is it? Would you say Roman coins are your your speciality? That's yes, they they them. are. They are. Um, I did them. I did. I did collect when I was younger. Of course, um, my collection was stolen actually as well. Oh, no. <laughs> it was nothing like my grandfather's collection. Um, it was a pretty modest collection, but it was still um, two or three hundred coins, I think, and. Um, it was when I was about um, 18 or so, and um, uh, I was just, I'd just gone to university, uh, actually, and um, I had other priorities at that stage, and luckily we had some insurance, and um, uh, I, I used the insurance money to buy a motorbike instead. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, okay. But when I did, uh, uh, when I was lucky enough to uh, get a, a job at the British Museum, although I think I, it would have been theoretically possible to have carried on 
collecting coins. Uh, I don't think it's a very good idea if you do work there to, to have your own collection because clearly you're, there's the possibility. Uh, you might forget who you're collecting for. Is it for your employer, your institution, or is it for your own collection? Yes. And basically, I, could, I knew I, um, I didn't need to. I could never rival the British no. collection, so there was really no point. Um, and I had a motorbike, so that, that was quite, <laughs> yeah. that, that was very useful. Excellent. Okay, so um, throughout your career, you've you've obviously um, studied the history of not just coins, but history and archaeology in general. Yeah. So how do you how do you think numismatics kind of fits into the the world mm. of history? Well, uh, some some periods in history, and I think the Roman period is a is a really good example, but um, quite a lot of other periods as well. The, the coins give us really interesting information about the about the history of the time. And um, the period that I suppose I've spent longest studying um, is is the, the 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 later Roman Empire in the third century AD. And um, we have an abundance of coins that survive from that period and very little uh, surprisingly little written history from that period. So the coins are really give us really important evidence for um, what was happening um, at, at that time. And they're tangible evidence, aren't they? I mean, it, uh, of, of, of life at, the, at that time. And people are really surprised when they learn that um, coins of um, the third century AD or third and fourth century ADs um, are really common in this country, um, found really quite commonly, and um, uh, they're not particularly um, expensive to buy. And one of the reasons why they're so common is because um, they turn up in hordes, um, in huge, mm -hmm. potentially in huge numbers, up to 50,000 coins or more um, have been discovered in hordes from that period. Um, and that when I was lucky enough to get a job at the British Museum um, uh, after university, um, that was what I spent most of my time on, was actually studying the hordes um, that, that were being discovered in ever greater numbers by people using metal detectors um, mm. back in the um, early 1980s. Um, and those were general, most of those uh, were brought to the British Museum um, uh, um, under the old um, treasure trove law to be, be studied. And um, that uh, when you have a hoard of um, several thousand coins comes in, that, that's going to take, that's quite a big job. And that, yeah. that, that uh, there, was, there were times when actually we were having a job keeping up with the sheer volume of hoards that were coming in. And it's still the same today. In fact, mm. probably slightly more. Anything. And would you say that these horn, uh, these hordes, and the, the discoveries of coins by people with metal detectors, do you think they're shedding new light on history? Kind of, Ooh, they are things? absolutely. Um, we have, I mean, we're extremely lucky in this country that uh, we um, have really. Um, a, 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 we have, there's a, um, it, it's perfectly possible to legal to use metal detectors here. Um, it, in a lot of countries, it isn't. And we, um, if, if they find a hoard of coins, um, there's a, a requirement, a legal requirement for them to be reported. But we're also very interested in recording um, coins that are just found one at a time as well. Um, it's completely voluntary to, to report those, but we strongly encourage um, the people who make the discoveries with metal detectors to report them. And we've recorded um, well over 100,000 of, of those um, now since the Portable Antiquity Scheme was set up in 1997. Um, and uh, we have five and a half thousand hordes are known from this country. And um, the last project that I did before I retired from the British Museum a few years ago, um, I just started a project um, with, with a, a group of colleagues uh, to have a really thorough investigation of this huge number of hordes um, that are being found from this country uh, and what they tell us about about life in Roman Britain at this time and they they potentially they can tell us a lot because um, uh, 
they give us an idea of um, how widely people were using coins mm -hmm. um, and um, what sort of coins they were using and what sort of coins found their way into this country because mostly um, these were coins that were being made in Rome and elsewhere and being imported into this country only for um, a few brief periods where they actually making coins um, in Britain in, in the Roman period. So yes, there's, there's a huge amount uh, that we can learn from, from studying um, these coins and I'm a specialist in the Roman period, so that's what I'm talking about, but it's just as important um, to uh, study coins from the Iron Age, from the earlier period. They, they can, we have no written history from that period, so the coins absolutely provide us with vital evidence for um, uh, what was happening in Britain in that period. And then in the, into the medieval period, again, the coin, the coin finds are incredibly important for understanding um, life in, in those periods as well. Yeah, okay. And what would you say, um, you know, you said there's 5,000 plus hordes that have been discovered. What, could you pick one that was particularly remarkable or sticks in the memory? <laughs> well, um, I suppose uh, quite soon after I arrived in the British Museum in 1983, um, we had uh, an, uh, what's still the largest hoard of Roman coins that's been found um, um, in this country um, from Wiltshire, um, a Roman town called Cunetio. And um, that was uh, uh, 52 and a half thousand coins. It was a huge job um, to firstly to clean those coins and then to study it, and which I did with um, my, uh, a colleague, Edward Besley, um, who recently retired from the National Museum of Wales. And that was um, that was a one or two year project um, just to get just to understand that um, to study all those coins. And we published a catalog um, which. Um, uh, is still quite is still used as, as as a basic work of reference for the coinage of that period because um, uh, there aren't any up to date um, reference books for 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 the for the coins of that particular period uh, from the two fifties and two sixties A.D. So that was um, uh, Cunetio hoard was one. I think the most spectacular hoard um, of, of coins that came in while I was working at the British Museum has to be the uh, enormous hoard of coins and jewellery that was found um, in Suffolk, a um, village called Hoxham in 1992. And yeah. that had 15,000 gold and silver coins from the very late, from the very last period of Roman Britain, but also 200 items of gold and silver jewellery including a wonderful little silver statuette of, of, of a tigress, um, a pepper pot made to look like a Roman empress, Helena, lots of um, spoons with the names of the owner on it, um, yes. all sorts of things. And that, that's, um, that's now on show in the British Museum. That's a fa that was a fantastic um, uh, find. And there was enormous, huge amount of interest in that, in that one. Too. Yeah. Excellent. OK, so um, just moving on to the uh, your role with the Royal Numismatic Society. Mm, mm. What can you tell us about about your role, but also about the society and why um, collectors might want to join? Yeah, well, it's um, actually one of the oldest societies um, of, 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 of numismatic societies in the world. Um, and uh, it, it's over 150 years old now. Um, mm. And um, it's um, uh, um, it, it, we publish a journal every year. We have a series of meetings um, in London. Last year we had to have them online, but we're hoping that we'll be able to have uh, go back to having physical meetings again from our new session, which starts in October. Um, and we we've got over five hundred members, who are um, about half of them are from this country, and about half of them. Uh, from all around the world. And it's a good way of um, getting to know other people who are interested in coins. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the journal publishes, um, you know, um, it's, it's one of the main journals of numismatics that's published um, in, in the world. And uh, uh, there's always a lot of material in that. And um, we also have um, 
regular um, newsletters that come around by email now as well. So um, if you're seriously interested in coins, um, it, 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 it's, a, it's a good society to join. Um, and uh, there's a second national society, the British, British Numismatic Society, which has a focus on coins from, from or found in Britain. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, the Royal Numismatic Society, our remit is to cover coins and medals from right across the whole world. So, um, the, the, and though we're sister societies, we have a joint library, which um, is kept in the uh, University of London, the Warburg Institute, um, and uh, we do a number of things um, together. They, they too have meet, regular meetings, um, but they, and they too publish um, a very um, important journal. But if you're seriously interested in coins, um, it, the, uh, one, one or both of those societies, it's, it's, it's uh, well worth joining. And think that the, the subscriptions are quite reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and would you say? Um, so would you say? You know, membership's open to to all, to anyone. You don't need a absolutely. To, no, we welcome. We we don't. Uh, we we don't have any um, uh, particular requirements um, except an interest in, in numismatics. We we we're, we're very happy to welcome anyone and we're ha particularly happy to welcome younger people as well um, yeah. if they'd like to join um it, it, you know interest in coins has i think gone up and down a bit over the last sort of 40 or 50 years when i when i was quite young um the uh decimal coins had just come in and that produced a sort of huge in increase in in collecting and i think it sort of tailed off a bit now um the, the the sort of um what should we say the sort of less um the less serious end of the market if you like but i mm -hmm. think what we have now is sort of quite a, a big bunch of really quite serious um people who are really quite seriously interested in in, in coins and it's it's unusual in a study of coins as being one area where people who aren't professionals can make really important contributions to the study of the subject and have done. Um, of course, you know, until about a um, hundred years ago, everyone was an amateur who studied coins. There weren't any mm -hmm. professionals, but um, we still have a, a very strong tradition of people, coin collectors making really important contributions to the study of the subject. I mean, the only other subject I can think of that's a bit like that is astronomy, where, you know, also you have yeah. that amateur tradition as well. Yeah, mm. fantastic. Okay, so if if a collector was um, wanting to find out the, the history and the stories behind some of the coins in their collection, mm. um, what kind of tips could you give them to kind of just take it to the next level? Yes, that's a, a, a good question, Matthew. I mean, um, I think that um, you probably if you're uh, going to start, most people do end up by um, specializing in collecting the coins of a particular area or particular period. So you'll probably want to start by um, getting hold of um, one or two reference books for those coins so that at least you can see what coins were being made in, uh, you know, in, 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 in Britain, um, let's say in the um, Anglo-Saxon period or something. Or, whatever period it might be, you'll probably start with, with some fairly basic reference works. Um, then um, you can take it really as, um, and you'll also probably, if you're a collector, you'll want to start um, uh, uh, contacting um, people who deal in, in those coins as well. Um, mm -hmm. A few years ago, it would have been a, a case of um, subscribing to um, coin dealers lists. Nowadays, more and more, it's a question of looking online um, mm -hmm. uh, because um, nearly nearly everyone puts their offerings up on, online these days and um, catalogues, printed catalogues are becoming a bit rarer because of course they are quite expensive to produce. It's very easy to put coins online. And I study the co coins I study of the Roman period. I'm amazed by just how many coins there are now online and how easy it is actually to find them and search them. 
um, with with search tools um, uh, like like Google. There's some also some excellent websites. I I, I was mentioning um, reference books, and they're still useful. But um, there's some very good reference sites um, online as well. Um, and um, then I think it would be if you're if you you are interested, I'd certainly recommend joining a society. Yeah. Um, if nothing else, in order to have a chance to to meet other people who who collect coins. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay. And one, one final question for you, Roger. Um, what do you think the future holds for numismatics and, you know, the study of coins? Well, it's, it's changed an awful lot um, just in the last um, 20 years. I think the internet's had an enormous impact, actually. Mm. Um, uh, um, and, of course, the other, th the other thing that goes alongside... I get the impression, and this isn't um, this isn't scientific at all, but uh, it's just an impression that there's more and more coins are appearing on the market, and I think that is related to the fact that there are a lot of discoveries um, of, of, of coins coming on the market. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know a little something about what happens in Britain. Um, of course, coins are found all over all over Europe and all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, huge numbers of coins are being found found in Britain, but but in other countries as well. And um, a lot of those do find their way onto the market. So, and a lot of those find their way onto onto the web. So there's a great deal of material out there. Um, the web's really r changed the way one can work and study coins because it's um, it's made a huge amount of. Uh, Material at really high quality photographs of coins are really easy to um, download now from the internet. So, mm -hmm. if you're really a, a serious um, scholar of coins, it's it's um, really changed the way you work. In the old days, um, I used to go around and study coins in collections in museums around Europe and the United States and, uh, and take photographs. Nowadays. Um, more and more museums are putting their collections online um, mm. and as I said there's lots of coins from um, appear on, 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 on the market that uh, you can find online as well um, so it's it's um, there's lots of potential if you're if you become interested in a particular um, series of coins and um, there, there's there's a huge amount to be done actually um, out there and um, so many more coins appearing all the time yeah. um, uh it's it's really quite hard to um i've been um i wrote a a, a study coins of um one emperor gordian the third for when i wrote my thesis in 1991 and i never got around to publishing it and i'm trying to do that now 30 years on and um but i i need to keep it up to date and i found almost three times as many coins i think um yeah. now as i knew in 1991 because there's yeah. just so much material out there. So yeah. there's a lot, if you're seriously interested in, in, in coins, I think there's lots of opportunities there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, well, that, that's um, fantastic. So uh, thanks so much for your time um, this afternoon, Roger. Um, really interesting to talk to you. And um, I think I'm going to go and uh, find uh, a subscription form for the Royal Numismatics. Okay. Class okay. Well, we'd love to have you as a member, Matthew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so thanks so much for your okay. time. Okay. Not and at we'll all. Speak soon. Nice to talk to you. Bye bye. Thank bye. you. Don't miss the festival.